Premium quality football shirts at an extremely affordable price. Sound good? If so, check out the sponsor of today's video, jerseyfifa.com. You can see that I've sent these some shirts and they really are top quality. So make sure to click the link in the description to go find a shirt for yourself or perhaps as a gift for someone else. And you can now use code jerseyfifa at checkout for 10% off your order. That's code jerseyfifa at checkout for 10% off your order. I really do recommend their products, so go take a look. Now let's get into the analysis. So the story of Cristiano Ronaldo continues. Without doubt, he is one of the best players of all time, if not the best. He's constantly been evolving his play style over the past couple of decades, but it looks like he might need to do it again. So we'll start with this season when he of course rejoined Manchester United, the club that really nurtured and developed him as a young player, and when he came back it felt a little bit like he had some unfinished business at the club. The hope was that he would be the player to finally help Manchester United win some trophies, but we all know that that hasn't happened, and United are actually worse than they were last season, with some people blaming Ronaldo for this. Now, one of the things that really gets thrown at him is that he doesn't press and he doesn't work hard enough out of possession, and these are valid points. However, to label him as the problem at the club just seems miles off from being correct. I mean, just look at the stats. In my opinion, the problem at a club doesn't score 24 goals in a really, really poor team with a terrible structure. Goal scoring is one of the hardest things in football, yet Ronaldo does it brilliantly. We also need to take into consideration the fact that this is one of the first seasons ever where Ronaldo has been asked to operate as an out-and-out -out solo striker with no real partner for him to really work off and link up with. So with that in mind, I actually think that Ronaldo's had a really good season. He's been overworked due to the unavailability of Cavani, yet he is still one of the highest goal scorers in the Premier League, despite playing in a poor attacking setup. However, despite this, there are still some question marks over his future, especially with Eric Ten Hag coming into the club because we all know that he will want to play a certain style. The question is, does Ronaldo fit that? So as you can imagine, that's what we're looking at today and to do this we'll start by taking a look at what Ten Hag has asked his strikers to do in the past and we'll start off with by looking at the tactics from this particular season so far. So the man that has been asked to lead the line for Ajax this season is of course Sebastian Haller, and this alone means that Ten Hag deserves credit because he has done an excellent job of getting the best out of a struggling player. Now largely Haller hasn't had too much of a role in building possession for Ajax, with his only real involvement being as an outball when Ajax are struggling to get out of the press, using the strengths of a hold up option for the team to then move further up the pitch. The same has continued to an extent in the final third as well, because again Haller doesn't tend to do too much work linking the play, and instead he makes his way into the box nice and early, acting as a real target in the centre to cross to. So the question is, could Ronaldo play this role? Well for me the answer is yes, and the Arsenal game in particular was an excellent example of Ronaldo's ability to hold the ball up as a more direct option out of the press, he done it really well. If Ronaldo was to play this sort of role on a more regular basis, then it could be beneficial for him in the long term because it would reduce the amount of explosive sprints that he needs to do, therefore allowing him to manage his workload. Honestly, I think that Ronaldo could quite easily play this hollow role, holding the ball up for his side whilst acting as a target in the box for crosses. However, as we know, Ten Hag has also used his strikers in a different way in the past. A prime example of this was the brilliant Ajax side of 2019, when Dusan Tadic was the striker, and immediately we can tell that he was always going to be asked to play a very different role to the one that Haller has been playing this season. One big difference with the role that Tadic was asked to play the other year was that he was regularly asked to move across the front line rather than just staying in the centre, and we actually regularly saw him popping up out wide. Having drifted into these wider areas, one of Tadic's main roles was to link the play with his fellow attackers, regularly dropping deep to receive the pass into feet, before then looking to bring others into the game, and it was an extremely important role in the team. So again, the question is, can Ronaldo play this sort of role? And again, for me, I'm quite confident that the answer is yes. It's something that Ronaldo has looked to do throughout his career, and his technical side is extremely underrated. In fact, this is probably the way that Ronaldo enjoys playing the most. Having previously played as a winger, it's almost second nature for him to drop into these wider areas to get the ball, before then looking to progress the play further forward. Having said that, I am truly of the belief that Ronaldo could operate extremely well in either of these roles, and to be honest, knowing how Ten Hag likes to operate from a tactical point of view, I wouldn't be surprised to see him using some sort of hybrid between the two. Personally, I think the best thing about this whole situation is the fact that Ronaldo has always been a player that is willing to learn and adapt as a footballer, so I'm sure he could adapt to play almost any sort of role that Ten Hag wants to demand. 
One of the things that makes me so confident about Ronaldo's ability to adapt is the fact that he is just such a well-rounded player, and he's technically proficient in every aspect, which we can see just by quickly looking at his FB ref report. Ultimately, above everything, Cristiano Ronaldo is a pure goalscorer. Over the years, he has put a ridiculous amount of work in to develop his finishing ability, and he has to be right up there as one of the very best goalscorers of all time. Again, if we just quickly go back to his numbers from this season so far, I genuinely think that he has had a very impressive season from a goal scoring point of view, and I'm not sure where United would be in the league without these goals. For that reason alone, it does make it seem like surely Manchester United have to do everything that they can possibly do to make sure that Ronaldo stays at the club for at least one more season. Surely he is too good to let him leave. However, you know how we do things on the channel, no player is perfect, and even Ronaldo has his flaws as a footballer, with one being the fact that he is heading towards the end of his career, and his best days in terms of energy levels are behind him. With that in mind, does Ronaldo have what it takes to play in a high pressing system that is constantly chasing and harassing the opposition in order to win the ball back as high up the pitch as possible? Can he really do that? To be honest, on face value, the answer to that question is probably no, and we've seen this season that Ronaldo simply doesn't have it in him to go chasing and pressing defenders for 90 minutes, but maybe there is a potential solution. Ten Hag is an intelligent tactician, and personally, I think that there is a way that you can adapt a pressing system in order to cater for the fact that one player isn't able to press as high. You just have to adapt the individual role slightly. Also, on top of that, you have to make sure that you get plenty of energy around him as well. One player lacking slightly is okay, but it can't be any more than that, so one of the key jobs for Ten Hag will be to get the right players around Ronaldo. But if this is done well, then I think it could work with the other forwards, providing the pure legwork and ground coverage, whilst Ronaldo acts more as a shadow presser, looking to cut the passing lanes into the feet of the opposition's holding midfielder. That's obviously just a brief example, and the details would be far more intricate than what I have just displayed. But my main point is that I do think Eric Ten Hag could come up with a pressing system which allows Ronaldo to help the team. Although, as I was saying earlier, one of the most important things will be to get the right players with the right mindset in and around Ronaldo, and I'm sure that Rangnick in particular has learnt quite a lot about that so far this season. As well as signing players to play in and around Ronaldo, Fabrizio Romano has also reported that Manchester United will almost certainly be looking to bring a young striker into the club. So what effect would that have on Ronaldo? Well, first things first, any young striker or even young attacker in general at Manchester United is going to massively benefit from working alongside Ronaldo, and I'm sure that he could almost work as a bit of a mentor for a young striker. Having another striker at the club would also allow Ten Hag to rotate his striker and give Ronaldo some rest, something that hasn't happened this season with Cavani never being available, so I'm sure that Ronaldo would massively benefit from this. The other potential option is that Ronaldo could also play as part of a front two alongside the new striker, allowing United to play in a diamond shape, something that Ten Hag looked to do during his time as manager of Utrecht a few years ago. Again, I'm sure that this would benefit Ronaldo massively, because when playing up front, he has always benefited from having a partner alongside him, and this would naturally allow Ronaldo to play to his strengths slightly more. I do genuinely think that Ronaldo deserves a lot of credit for the way that he has adjusted this season. It took a little bit of time at the start of the year, but at 37 years old, Ronaldo has been playing pretty much his first ever season as a solo striker. And again, with that in mind, I genuinely think that quite a lot of people in the media, and just fans in general, genuinely owe Ronaldo an apology, because to label him as the problem at the club just seems absolutely ludicrous. Despite all this criticism and the hate that he has received, deserved or not, as always, Ronaldo has managed to prove everyone wrong with some incredible performances this season, and once again, it just proves how good his mentality is. So, we've looked at Ronaldo's mentality and a few of his strengths on the ball, whilst we've also discussed whether or not he has what it takes to operate in Eric Ten Hag's system, so I just want to finish the video by giving some of my concluding thoughts. So my personal opinion is that Manchester United should look to keep Ronaldo at the club, He's a brilliant goal scorer and he still has so much to offer to this team, as he has proven this season, and in today's market it's not easy to replace those goals. Despite this, there will be work for Ten Hag to do because the major issue is finding a way to fit Ronaldo into a pressing system that protects him. But as I keep saying, I do think it's possible, and if anyone can do it, it is Eric Ten Hag. As well as developing a pressing system, Ten Hag will also need to make sure that he manages Ronaldo's game time. But signing a young striker would certainly help with this and really ease the load on Ronaldo's ageing legs. Because Ronaldo is the sort of player that can still help this team, even in the games that he doesn't play. 
simply because of his experience and his mentality off the pitch, and that needs to be spun into a positive in the changing room. But ultimately, we're going to have to wait and see what Ronaldo decides, and also what Ten Hag decides. But as always, I want to hear your thoughts on the whole conversation, so make sure to get into comments down below and let me know what you think. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.